Hello everyone, we are, uh, my name is Liam Wyatt and this is Jane Darnell. We'll be presenting the User Digest session about, about GLAM. Unfortunately, uh, we are already halfway through the time that we have allotted, so if there's Anna Torres who is next, we'll try and be on time. Um, so that's unfortunate. The, uh, so the summary, this, this session is about trying to summarize about trying to summarize developments in GLAM activities over the last year or so, but in no way trying to be comprehensive. There is not possible to give a complete rundown of every kind of activity, all the innovations, all the things that everyone is doing. So we'll try and make a bit of a summary of different kinds of interesting innovations we are seeing uh, without pretending that we're going to cover everything. We've also mentioned this, and this is just the program page. So you can find all of these links for yourself linked off this session in the program. As you can see at the end here, I've also linked all of the other GLAM-related activities that are happening at Wikimania. So particularly later today, there is training Wikidata and GLAM. Tonight is a GLAM coordinators meetup. It's parallel to our other couple of things, but if you're involved in coordinating GLAM activities in your country or user group, come to that so we can help collaborate together. Uh, there's also guided tours of Essino Laurio, so that's a kind of a GLAM activity. Uh, and on Sunday, there is a World Cultural Heritage uh, presentation that you might be interested in as well. So there are, this is not the only GLAM activity happening at Wikimania. I'm going to jump straight to Jane's section because it's the most visually interesting and I want to make sure that we have enough time to explore that section properly. Uh, specifically, the innovative kinds of reuse. I can, we can come back to the other topics later if we have time uh, and you can obviously link to them yourself to learn more about the Wikipedia library and so forth. But in our perspective, the really interesting changes in the way that GLAM activities are happening this year and, and onwards is how Wikidata is getting uh, more and more embedded into the GLAM activities. Even if they're commons uploads or Wikipedia translation competitions, how that is affecting and being affected by Wikidata is, in our opinion, the most uh, innovative. So I'll throw across to Jane for a demonstration of some of these cool tools. Okay, so I'm Jane Darnell. I'm generally involved in the sum of all paintings together with Liam and a few other people. Right next to the and I've been doing a lot of work on uh, using the tools that have been coming, coming through the pipeline from Magnus Manska. Is anybody here familiar with the tools of Magnus? Raise your hand. How many, are, how many people here have actually used Listeria? Okay, I'm a huge Listeria fan. Um, and uh, Europeana's Art History Challenge, which Liam just um, uh, held, has given us this incredible data set of really high quality paintings and articles across how many languages? 40 languages, that's awesome. I'm, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm currently, um, uh, a Wikipedia in residence for TED Talks. I how many people here have heard of TED Talks? Okay, great. The, uh, the challenge is now running off of Outreach Wiki, and we have 33 languages participating. I'm so excited about that, creating articles about TED speakers. And you can say that uh, the 1,500 people that now have talks on their main website, they're all notable. They're not notable because they gave a TED Talk. No, they gave a TED Talk because they're notable. All right. <clears throat> We're going to go to the first really cool reuse, which is going to show you the basis of a Wikidata query based off this art history challenge that just took place because we really love the data set that it generated. Now, if I, this is a Sparkle query. It looks really scary to people who do not code, but it's actually fairly easy, and it's not SQL, it's not programming, so don't be afraid. There are a lot of Sparkle uh, sessions going on at Wikimania, and if you don't 
uh, find someone who can help you. You can just ask one of us or ask Lydia or just put a, put a regular um, uh, question out on the project chat on Wikidata. Now, if I hit run here, this is going to show you the birthplaces mapped geographically of all of the artists that actually have artwork in the Art History Challenge. Just scroll down, I think. You're making it bigger. Yeah. And obviously, this is Europeana, so it's heavily Europe-centric. But this is a type of thing. This is not something that Liam coded. It's not something that Europeana attended. This is something that enthusiastic Wikidatans have been able to make possible using the data set that his challenge has actually created. And that's, I think, the whole point, is that we used to try and sell the idea of donations, image donations to commons as a way of uh, GLAMs uh, creating a new audience for their collections. But now you see that their data is also interesting to us. We can do more than just reuse their images. So I'm going to go back. Back. OK. Now, um, the next thing is what I was just talking about earlier, which are Listeria lists. Um, and this one is, an, is my first live Listeria list. Uh, I told you I work with paintings, and I did a lot with Franz Halls, because Franz Halls was born in the town I live in, in Harlem. And Jacob van Roosdale is also born in the town I live in, and I actually live on the Jacob van Roosdale Lane. So <clears throat> this is, an, is a list that's live. It's built with a Listeria uh, bot that um, Magnus uses. And you'll notice that it, it's, it's actually live. If I click here on Manual Update This List, it'll just go to Wikidata and see if there's anything to refresh. And what I have here, this is English Wikipedia, I have the image, whether or not it's been donated by Glam, I don't know. I didn't pay attention to that. I just grabbed the painting that is associated with that, with that item. The date of the painting, whether it's in a private collection or wherever it is, the inventory number, and now, thanks to the Welsh Wikipedia, I actually dared to include the queue number in my columns. And so far, the English Wikipedia has been very welcoming. But of course, the Dutch Wikipedia said, no, we don't want queue numbers in our name space zero. So they deleted it. But this is uh, a great way to show how, uh, uh, in particular, this one probably has way more data. You see that this, this list is giving me just a few columns of data, but if I go to the Wikidata item for this painting, I actually have a lot more information in the Wikidata item than I'm giving you in this particular um, uh, list. So here's the, the uh, first of all, the label has actually been translated into uh, a few languages. It's a painting, it's oil paint, it's landscape art, it's got an image. It's in a private collection. It has a creation date. It was owned by Anton Phillips of Phillips Energy. Uh, it depicts Hermann Ronce. So we actually know the church that's actually depicted there. And these are all the catalogs with the catalog numbers that it actually appears in. Um, it has uh, dimensions in it. And it actually links out to this external database of the Dutch um, uh, Library of the Netherlands, which gives you a whole lot more information with a different image, all about the same painting. And that's, of course, the huge uh, way that you can leverage the data that you have in your collection to go beyond your walls into the walls of other institutions, right? And I think that's the main trend that we're seeing, that, that the data is enriching the information that you can offer the viewer who's actually wandering through your, your halls if, you're, if you've got it on the wall of your, of your halls. In this case, it's private collections, so we don't even know. Let me go back. To, to just to expand on that, because I don't think Jane mentioned the key feature of this particular tool, is that this looks like a Wikipedia article, list article, like we've always seen. The point is, this is a bot-generated list with information being sucked in from Wikidata. All you do is put a template, list the names of the columns you want, 
and the search query you are searching for, in this case it is paintings by this person, and then give me the resulting th these five columns, and it appears in your Wikipedia, and will update live in your Wikipedia if someone else adds more information. So just like the way we've, that Wikidata is slowly coming to info boxes, you can also do that relatively easily with lists. Now, I know that Tomás will have the question about this one that, no, we don't know if it's complete. But it is better than what might have been otherwise, where you could have 25 different lists in different languages, particularly valuable for the smaller language Wikipedias that will never have the number of people to maintain uh, potentially obscure topic areas. Uh, so it is the, the value add of one person doing the work in Wikidata for hundreds of languages, maybe. I think that issue about completeness is something you also have on Wikipedia, actually. I mean, Wikipedia is also rarely set in stone. If you have a, a catalog, and the catalog goes from one to 100, then you know it's complete if you have all 100 items. But a lot of times, you don't you don't know which catalog, and, and especially with, in, in terms of Jakob van Ruysdael, sometimes these paintings go back and forth between Jakob van Ruysdael and other painters, and it gets flipped all around every 20 years or so, so what's complete? <laughs> yes, got to go back, I think. All right, um, this next one is an image that I just uploaded. So this is a snapshot of a Wikipedia uh, article, a little tiny piece of a Wikipedia article. This is an English Wikipedia article uh, of a Rembrandt self-portrait that he painted age 21. It's in the collection of the Rijksmuseum. And this is a, a case where the Rijksmuseum has donated their images. Uh, they made them free of uh, copyright and free to reuse about six years ago, I believe. And then uh, someone from the UK uploaded them all about three years ago. And you've see, you see now that the 3,500 3, paintings of the Rijksmuseum have been used to illustrate Wikipedia topics all across Wikipedia. And I thought it would be interesting to, to look at this particular one. I, uh, I did Jakob Rausel. I also made a list of paintings by uh, Rembrandt based on the Rembrandt research project so I can categorically say that list is actually complete on the English Wikipedia, but I didn't actually update all of the Wikipedia articles. This is a, clearly a very stubby one. Um, if I go to the actual article, go, this is the article live. You can see here the interwiki links, right? So it's actually been translated into Italian, Dutch, and Polish. Um, this image here is the uh, image that was originally used in this article, which predates the version from the Rijksmuseum. Rembrandt is so important that this image was already on Wikipedia. Um, if I go to uh, Italian, I'll see that it's actually a little bit less stubby. It actually has an info box, which it doesn't even have in the English Wikipedia. It even includes a detail. If I go to um, Dutch, it's, uh, you know, being Rembrandt, it's quite a bit quite a bit larger, quite a bit longer. But um, what's interesting is if I go to the Polish version, which predates all of them, this particular version, I don't know if anybody notices anything weird about this, um, it's showing a different painting. <laughs> it's not even the painting that's in the Rijksmuseum. <laughs> so, if you really um, look at these uh, articles and you're just looking at the data, you're zeroing in, you're, you're actually looking at a small subset of what a uh, GLAM has donated, you think that if you donate the, the image, you're done. You're wrong because you, there's no guarantee that, first of all, your image is going to get used, and second of all, if it's going to get used correctly. This particular image is of a painting that hangs in Kossel, and it really deserves its own article. It's a, considered now a copy of the uh, version in the Rijksmuseum, but I don't know if you can notice there are these little yellow hairs that are very unusual. Well, the Rembrandt specialist thinks that's very, very interesting, and I can assure you this is very, very notable painting. It deserves its own article, and it doesn't have one today. But if I click on this Wikidata item, 
for this particular Polish article, it's going to take me to the Rijksmuseum uh, data item. And um, thank you. There I go. Elemento. <laughs> I'm not very comfortable in Polish, obviously. So here we have the Wikidata item for this particular painting of the Rijksmuseum. And what we see here in the statements for the image that's associated with this item, it's neither the incorrect Kossel image, but it is also not the old image that's used in the English um, uh, version of the article. It's also not the other version used in the Dutch version of the article. It's actually a high quality Google art image. It's also not the image that was donated by the Rijksmuseum. And I think that's also kind of sad but also interesting. But what we do have here in this item is we have a lot of really cool data that the Rijksmuseum did give it to us. So we have all this stuff. We have, of course, the inventory number. We have uh, the location, material used, and so forth. We have catalog codes, of uh, Rembrandt things. We also have all these other identifiers of all these other external parties, not just the RKD images that I showed you for that Ryakov for Raustal, but it has a Europeana number. It has all these other things. Um, and now I want to show you another great Magnus tool. Oh, yeah, so, th so there's, this also is in the list of Rembrandt paintings. That's also a Listeria thing, uh, a Magnus tool. And now I'm going to show you another Magnus tool. If I click on this image, this is taking me to the Google Art image. I've collected all these various versions of the image, and it now has its own category, a category of self, this particular self-portrait by um, uh, Rembrandt. Thank you. Um, how do I get back to the program? Oh, gosh. Uh, this one? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I want to go to here. <laughs> but what I did is at the bottom of this, I have all these um, versions. I gave you a link to something called the Glam Organ. I have to copy this because I don't know how to do a, how do I open another tab on this? Do I have a control right click? Let's try it. Ah, yes. Okay. All right, I've got to show them Glam Organ because it's really cool. Glam Organ is this one. This is the Magnus thing. How many people here are familiar with Glam Organ? It's relatively new. Nobody. Okay, cool. So if I take this commons category for this particular painting, you see it has several images in it, and I dump it into Glam Organ here. It accepts commons categories, and it's going to give me the usage data for the month of January in 2016. And it also tells you exactly where these images are used. And what we see is this one that's in the English, Dutch, and Italian wikis is the one that's most commonly used, followed by the Google Art image, which has been recently added to the wiki data item. So here we have, uh, again, Italian wiki, and I don't even know what wiki that other one is. It's actually using the wiki data information. Um, then we have the detail, which is also being used. And then we see this very sad little one by the Rijksmuseum that has zero views. And that's, the one. that's the one that was donated by the GLAM. So that's kind of food for thought right there. Are there any questions? That's a bad sign. On the... Anna? Anna? If you could come up and set up, just as we uh, wrap up, uh, like I said, we are um, half time. Um, so thank you, Jane, for those th three example cases of innovative Wikidata use in GLAM. All of these links, as I said before, are on, these, on our session page here, so you can see these content and other things that we didn't get time to talk about. 
The embedded slides here are the slides we gave at the Wikimedia conference this year in Berlin a couple of months ago, which include more information about the Wikipedia library, the Visiting Scholars program, the One Lib One Ref campaign that was quite successful this year. Uh, so you can find out more information about that, as well as some uh, new Commons uploader tools that have been introduced recently, uh, chapter created tools, and some what we consider to be some particularly innovative uh, uh, case study examples, uh, for example, from Catalonia's network of public libraries that we recommend people getting involved in new GLAM projects should read.